we have this simple Ruby on Rails application, we want to start to add a bunch of JavaScript so we can perform some unique tasks on the client side. However, we want to ensure that the JavaScript on one page does not interfere with the JavaScript that is meant to run on another page. So we can embed within our views to accomplish something like this. So if we create a script tag, and then we paste in our JavaScript, we're able to create this page-specific JavaScript. However, this is generally bad practice as this will completely avoid the asset pipeline, which will in turn not be pre-compiled during the production deployments. It doesn't allow for the code to be reused in other parts of the application, and in general just starts to create a lot of code smell. So one of my preferred ways to do this is within my application layout in the body tag is to create a data attribute and this data attribute would then be accessible within the JavaScript. So here I can just call the action and set this to the action name and then controller and set this to the controller name. Another way to do this is you can create a tag in your header and this would just be a meta tag. And from within here, you can give it a name. And in our case, we're just going to call this page specific JavaScript. And then we can give it a few variables. So in our case, again, we'll give it the action name and controller name. And we'll look at both of these implementations and you can pick whichever one that you like the best. So within our visitor's coffee file, we had this document on Turbolinks load. So whenever we refresh the page or whenever we go to a new page via Turbolinks, this will still be executed. And then we'll return unless. So this means that if the following condition does not match, then we will return and not execute any of the following below code. So the first condition is that we check the meta name PSJ, and then we check the attribute controller if this is equal to the visitors. And the second part, if the same meta tag PSJ and the action equals index. And if you want to make a JavaScript file for just one controller, then you could come in out the action part. So then this would run on any controller that's visitors and then we run any of the page specific JavaScript at the bottom here. And if you're using the body tag with the data attributes, then you can reference to it something like this, where you return unless the body.dataController equals visitors and the body.data action equals index. And while both of these implementations will work, I really don't like them because this can be a lot of repetitive typing and I would much rather have something where it's going to be much shorter and that we can reference much more easily and not have to remember what this is or find another file with it and then copy and paste from there. So we can create a init coffee script file and we'll just call class page and we'll set this controller method to return our meta tags controller value and then the action function to return the meta tags action value and of course, you can also use your body tags with the data attributes and they'll work just as well. And then at the bottom here, we set this instance to a new page. So it then initializes this function. Back in our visitors coffee script file, we can call return unless and then this page controller equals visitors and the page action equals index. So this is much smaller and personally, I think this will be much easier to remember. So with our users example, we have our index coffee script file and we do validate on the controller and index in this instance. However, if we look at just the standard users coffee script file, so we're not indicating the file name by an action and you really can come up with your own file naming structure, but I do like keeping it under the app assets JavaScripts. And then for each controller, I'll create its own folder and then put in the page specific JavaScripts either as an action name or if it's something global for that controller, then I'll just call it the user's coffee for the user's controller. And here you'll see that I'm doing this where it's just checking on the controller and not necessarily the action. So if we test this out now, we can refresh our page and now we still have our JavaScript running. If we go over to the users tab, we should expect two of them because one is coming from the index users and the other is coming from the user's controller. If we go to the show page, you'll see that it's just coming from the user's controller. And if we create a new record, again, it's just coming from the user's controller. So we can see that it's running on the Turbolinks. And if we reload the page, it all still works. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.